The Apple Vision Pro is official. I've had a demo and wow, there's a lot to talk about. I've got lots to tell you. Now you probably already know that in the demo, we couldn't actually film. So this is more about my experience. I have been very impressed at how accurate the eye tracking was, how detailed everything was as well. But let's break it down in terms of the initial comfort. So you do need to do like a bit of a face ID scan to get the right fit. And it is modular. The initial fit that I had wasn't quite right. So we had to do that again. Now, usually from what we've seen mostly is it just straps around the sides, but there was also a bit that goes through the front. So I, I guess that's gonna be there, makes it a little bit more comfortable, but it does mess up your hair. So that's just something that I found. But anyway, once you found your right fit, it is generally quite comfortable, although I'm not sure how it will be using it for longer periods of time. Uh, but once you've kind of got it on, you can uh, do a short exercise to make it familiar with your eyes. And then the eye tracking is so good it's so accurate as well. And then as soon as you wanna select something, you can just look at it and then just tap like this. You don't have to have your hand up or anything. You can just have it down here and tap. And it's so, so, so intuitive. And it was something that I thought was gonna take a little bit of time to get used to, but pretty soon I was just going around the whole interface so easily. It was just really, really good. Now, there were a couple of times because I'm somebody who like has my hands together when I'm sitting down. Uh, it did get confused a little bit. And also when I was kind of swiping across, it was, there were a couple of times, but this is like pre-production and you know, I'm sure this is gonna be getting better. But just the fact that it can track your eyes with the four cameras and the bunch of sensors and all of your different hand motions and things is super impressive. They've got something like 5,000 patents. Now you can use Siri with voice controls. This is something that I didn't get to test. And there's also a virtual keyboard. So you can look at the different keys and tap like this, or you could actually type as well, but this is something I didn't get to test. The good news is that you can actually connect a magic keyboard and trackpad if you wanted. So the way I kind of see this is if you're out and because this is running with the M2 chip, you could have things like Microsoft Word, uh, Excel and things like that. And you wouldn't have to carry a laptop with you, which would be pretty cool. And that brings me on to the uses. Now, first thing I want to talk about is the resolution. So it's more than 4K per eye and it's very, very crisp. The one thing that I did notice is initially we saw some panoramas that were shot on the iPhone. Now, although the iPhone shoots great panoramas, they were blown up quite a bit. So I was initially thinking, is it the resolution of the panoramas or is it uh, the Vision Pro? But it was the resolution of the panoramas. As soon as I started seeing some of the environments and uh, some of the different content that was on there, it was so, so crisp and clear. And especially the user interface, all the icons and everything, super, super crisp. Now, because you do have stereoscopic vision, you've got something different on each eye, you can see 3D content. So, you know, watching Avatar in pretty much a cinema setting was really, really cool. And also seeing some of the different demos where it almost looks like things are really close. Now, I know 3D gets a bit of a bad name, uh, but with this, the 3D experience was some of the best that I've seen. Now, you could also use it for gaming. You can connect a Bluetooth gamepad. Uh, this is something, again, that I didn't get to test, but I can really imagine how immersive that would be using the Vision Pro. Now, one of the things I was really interested in was uh, the fact that you can just look at your MacBook and it will bring up the display large format. You can make it as large as you want. One thing I was interested in was, would you be able to have multiple screens? But that's not something that's gonna come initially. Uh, maybe it's something that will come later on, but uh, the way I kind of picture this is, here's my MacBook Pro. I have the main screen, but then I can extend that have my timeline of editing or something like that, which would be absolutely awesome. But uh, again, that's not there right now. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far and you wanna see more like it, then maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss future coverage like this. Now, of course, because this is WWDC, it's the developer conference, we will be seeing apps developed specifically and more content developed specifically for the Vision Pro uh, early next year when it is released. Uh, but for now, you'll be able to see all of the content that you can normally see on Apple TV and other streaming platforms. And we also saw Disney. So, I mean, I can really see live streams, like if you're watching a game of football or basketball or something, where you can really feel like you're there. Uh, but also, if there was like a documentary, like I can just imagine seeing Planet Earth in 3D, like you're fully immersed. And some of the demos that we saw, you know, there was like rhinos coming right close to you. It was super, super impressive. Now, one of the things that's really interesting about the Vision Pro is that Apple wants it to be as immersive as you would like. So you can actually have pass through and you can see the environment around you, which is absolutely fine. But if you turn the digital crown, 
you can actually blank everything else out. So it's almost like you're in a different place. And this is perfect if, say, for example, you're in a plane or something and you don't want to really see much of your surroundings. And the other interesting thing as well is that other people can't see what you're looking at. So if you're working on a private document, then they're not gonna be able to see that, which I think is really cool. And while you are immersed, if a person comes near you, then it is gonna slowly fade and you'll be able to see them. Uh, currently is only gonna be working with humans, but uh, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what about pets, cats, uh, dogs, if they come towards you. Well, for the production model, that might be the case. Let's see. Now, if somebody does walk over to you, then they will be able to see your eyes. And this is something that uh, Apple are calling eyesight. What's interesting is it's actually gonna be your digital persona that you'll be seeing on the front, not your actual eyes, but they'll be reacting as you would be reacting. So once you get the Vision Pro, you can do a scan of yourself. This will also be used for FaceTime. So this is something that a lot of people were wondering that if you are using FaceTime with this on, then people will actually see your digital persona. Now I did have a FaceTime call test and it was interesting because it was really good and it was also 3D because you can have that stereoscopic effect with this digital persona, but it still wasn't fully natural. Like, you know, it, it almost feels like you're talking to uh, somebody that's uh, made from AI. Now, obviously, if that's somebody that you know, then it might be a little bit different, but I'm still not 100% sure about this. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention was that the Vision Pro does have two cameras, so you can record stereoscopic 3D video and it can really take you back to the times when you've recorded that video. One of the examples we saw was on a birthday party and it really makes you feel like you're there. However, I'm not sure how it would be if you were recording video, especially with kids that wanna actually use that. I don't know if you'd be able to record 3D video with a different device or something like that. It's quite interesting. Now, when you are immersed, like it is almost like you're in a different place, honestly. Like after a bit, you sort of forget where you are and you have this environment around you and you've also got spatial audio so spatial audio worked really really well uh say for instance the facetime call was on my right side i could actually hear it and it all just felt like this is where it's coming from it was really really good but also one thing to consider is that because you have the speakers uh if you are on a plane and the on the keynote when apple showed this example it is best to have something like airpods on i'm not sure if you'll be able to get your airpods max on as well as the vision pro that's going to be a lot of stuff now one thing that a lot of people talk about is motion sickness. I did not have any motion sickness. It was a very comfortable experience. There is very little lag, it's something like 12 milliseconds, which means everything is very, very smooth. And in terms of the refresh rates, uh, this is something that again, Apple hasn't disclosed, but I think it is ProMotion. I think it's 120 Hertz because everything did seem very smooth. Right, now in terms of the comfortability, so it weighs just over a pound, so it's not heavy, but it's not light either. And having on for about half an hour, it's pretty comfortable, but uh, I think I'd only be able to use it for a couple of hours at a time. And you know, that's how much the battery lasts as well. And speaking of the battery, this is external. So you have a cable going down and the battery pack is separate. Now this actually makes sense to me if some people were criticizing it, but having that battery weight on your head as well would be a bit too much. So I actually think it's good that it's separate. Also, I mean, you could just disconnect it and have a fully charged battery with you if you wanted, I mean, I'm not sure how much it's gonna cost and I'm not sure if there ever will be third party versions, but you can plug this into a power socket, but the plug goes into the battery. So it doesn't go straight into the Vision Pro, it goes into the battery. Now, what I thought would be cool is if you could just disconnect the battery and then just have a fully charged one, which you can just snap on, but no, the cable's actually attached. So you would have to get a separate battery with the cable that attaches on to the Vision Pro. Now, two hours is the guide time. We're not sure if that's gonna be for the different types of content. I mean, I'm sure if you're gaming, if you're doing something more intensive, it might be less than that, might be more. We'll find out more towards release time. But let's talk about the price because I know a lot of you guys are gonna be commenting about that already. Three and a half thousand dollars. Yes, that's a lot of money. But uh, in my opinion, this is, brand new tech there's nothing else really like it that works at this level and it's also a first gen product right so for me the way i see it is yes you're going to get some early adopters you're going to get some enthusiasts that can have this but when we do get further in some of the generations then i see this being a device that you can buy for say a thousand dollars and that will be for the masses and it's also going to get better smaller with other generations. So I think that's something very important to remember that 
this is a first gen product and we forget that. Of course, in the ideal future, we'd have Vision Pro, which would be just like these sunglasses, which you could just put on, but we have to start somewhere. And I think as a first gen product, this is super, super impressive. It's some of the most impressive tech that I've seen recently. And I honestly can't wait to get it in hand and uh, really use it when it does release, which is gonna be early next year. Do you guys see yourself getting on? What do you think so far? Drop me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. And a big thanks to Michael Josh from Gadget Match for helping with the B-roll. If you wanna see his video, I'll link that down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed this video, found it useful. If you did, then do smash that like button for me. And if you haven't already, then do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you don't miss future content like this. I'll leave some related videos here and here. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on SuperSaf TV, and I'll see you next time.